Hi everyone, I'm Umash Shafi. I'm a PhD scholar at IIT Delhi, India. I will be presenting my work uh, titled uh, Demystifying uh, Tensor RT, Characterizing Neural Network Inference Engine on NVIDIA Edge Devices. So the outline of my talk would be like this. I'll start with the introduction and then give some background of Tensor RT, uh, followed by the evaluation setup. Then I will discuss about the accuracy metric analysis. Uh, subsequently, I will talk about uh, the performance uh, metric analysis. Uh, then I will discuss the implications of these analysis. And then, then I will end up with the concluding remarks. So let's start with the introduction. So as we know, many of these embedded devices are becoming a very common place for efficiency and an inference. And many of the vendors have uh, provided different uh, inference engines uh, for this efficient uh, CNN inference. Yeah. So as you can see from the figure, there's a dotted, uh, there's a box highlighted in dotted red. Um, so we have different uh, CNN inference engines proposed by different vendors here. Like we have NVIDIA's TensorRT uh, and we have Intel, Intel have their own MKL DNN and AMD, Xilinx and ARM have their own inference engines. However, the highlight, uh, the, the main uh, aim of this paper is to analyze the, uh, analyze the fr uh, software framework proposed by NVIDIA, which is TensorRT, in, um, uh, in their edge devices. So before going into the analysis part, let's try to understand how a TensorRT engine is built. So we have different models, CAFE, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Darknet. Let's see how a TensorRT optimized engine is built from them. For this, we have different steps followed by the TensorRT. Let's go through them one by one. The first one is the dead layer removal. So in this, the different uh, unused layers are removed from the CNN network. Then we have the vertical fusion and the horizontal merging. In these two steps, uh, what happens, the layers of the uh, CNN are fused together and the different branches of the layers of the CNN are merged together. And then we have the quantization. So quantization is typically an optimization step performed by TensorRT that maps um, FP30, floating point 32 to floating point 16 or int integer 8, depending on the architecture, whether it supports it or, or not. Then we have the last step in the TensorRT that's called layer to kernel mapping. So layer is, uh, so typically we have different CNN layers and different uh, GPU kernels, which GPU kernels are typically the functions which actually get executed on the GPU. So each CNN layer is uh, mapped to different kernels um, based in the TensorRT. So after all these steps are done, we obtain an uh, optimized TensorRT engine. And the last step in this, uh, what we call as layer to kernel mapping, this is the this is the non-deterministic step of uh, TensorRT. What do I mean by that? That means um, if we have a, if we build a TensorRT TensorRT engine uh, and say a layer L1 is mapped to some K1 in that um, in that compiled engine, it's not necessary when you build it again. L1 will be mapped to K1 now. It, it it is it is quite possible that L1 will be mapped to K2 now. So this is called the non-determinism. Uh, in uh, TensorRT and this will be the main focus of this uh, talk throughout. Now let's go through the evaluation setup uh, and various evaluation uh, um, uh, networks which we have used uh, for our analysis. So we have used two uh, embedded boards for our uh, analysis. One is a Xavier NX and the other is a Xavier AGX. Both are, uh, both are NVIDIA boards uh, with, the, which, with the Volta architecture. Uh, so Xavier AGX is much powerful board compared to NX. Uh, what I mean by that is, is that it has more number of cores, CPU cores, more number of GPU cores. It has more uh, memory and uh, also the frequency is uh, quite higher than the NX. Next, we talk about the neural networks which we have used for our analysis. We divide the networks into uh, three types. A uh, few of them are uh, image classification networks few of them are detection networks and one of them is a segmentation network. We have uh, done all our analysis on all these networks. Now let's uh, dig into the accuracy metric analysis. So we first study the classification accuracy on benign and adversarial data sets. Uh, so benign images are the clean images with no noise in them, while as the adversarial images are the corrupted images with some noise in them. For adversarial images, we have different severity levels, severity level one you know, to five. 
so if the severity level is less that means uh, the amplitude of noise is less if it is more that means the amplitude of noise is more in them we obtain the uh, errors error values for optimized uh, tensor rt networks and the unoptimized networks for benign and adversarial data sets both so this shows the error values for a benign data set and we see that for unoptimized networks the error values are, uh, are relatively much more compared to the tensor rt optimized uh, engines and similarly when we see it for uh, uh, the adversarial data sets we see the similar trend we have the error for unoptimized networks are more compared to the tensor rt opt uh, networks the, uh, the primary reason for this is that tensor rt optimizations like weight quantizations and all they reduce the overfitting thus leading to a better accuracy next we check the consistency of output labels what do i mean by the consistency of output labels it means that uh, for an input image if i um, if if i want to check uh, what is the output of this uh, image using some uh, using a, some cnn network it should remain consistent let's suppose if the image says it's a dog it should remain consistent across it should not be that on some different tensor rt engine um, it says it's a cat so the output should remain consistent throughout so we uh, we check it for across the platforms and uh, on the same platform also so first the first table shows that uh, when we have this uh, when we have this across the platforms so if you see it for let's suppose for resident 18 nx1 and agx1 means that uh, that we have an engine compiled on nx1 and we have an engine compiled on agx1 and we give it an input the same input to both of the uh, engines and we see that there are 380 inconsistencies uh, for this so they should be they are producing different results for on these two different engines so similarly the, the other values are also significantly much higher and when you look at the below table we have this three different engines that means these are engines one two and three are the engines that are built on the same uh, same board so we also see that for for nx we have these uh, for resnet 18 we have the inconsistencies and similarly for ajx we have this for three networks where there are output inconsistencies so the 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 the, the final uh, uh, final summary is that for same input image output of different engines built across the platforms can also vary and also the output might also vary when it's built on the same platform now let's go into the performance metric analysis so we here go through the throughput for image classification networks uh, we have unoptimized classification networks and tensor rt optimized networks if we see uh, if we see the table we see that uh, that the throughput of uh, tensor rt networks are is significantly much higher than the unoptimized networks both on nx and agx the reason for this is the quantization. So uh, TensorRT does this uh, 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 step called as quantization, which maps this FP32 to FP16 or INT8. So these two boards, NX and AGX, they support INT8 quantization. So the present uh, for these experiments, the quantization is INT8. That's why we see a very high significant uh, throughput increase. We next study the throughput for image detection models along with the concurrency support. We have a single CUDA context and we have multiple streams which are typically multiple threads that are bound together in this single CUDA context so that the multi-threading is enabled. We up obtain the FPS and the GP utilization values uh, for both TinyYolo and GoogleNet. So TinyYolo is typically a lighter model compared to the GoogleNet which is a heavier model. So if you look at this graph, we have a uh, this is this is on NX for tiny YOLO. For the, so we look from this graph that the number of threads uh, supported are 28. Uh, what we found after the uh, after this number 28, then the FPS goes down, and also the GPU utilization saturates. And when we look at the same analysis for a, for a heavier model like Google Net, we see that the number of threads supported are less. Now, what's the reason for the saturation in the number of threads? So typically we have this RAM bandwidth saturation because as you increase the number of threads, more weights have to be fetched from the main memory. So we have this equation called which, uh, which gives us the upper bound on the number of threads that are supported on a particular board. 
which is uh, which is n is equal big O of f mem multiplied by the um, uh, memory bus width and divided by the bandwidth used by one thread. Now let's uh, discuss the inference latencies of these uh, NN models that are obtained using a tool called NVPROF. So we have two different scenarios here. One is that you build a TensorRT engine on one board and do the inferencing on the same board. The other is that you build, an, uh, build a TensorRT engine on one board and do the inferencing on the other board. This leads us to four different cases. First one is this compile on NX, run on NX. That means compile on NX only and do the inferencing on it also. Then it's compile on NX and run on AGX. And then the vice versa. Compile on AGX, run on AGX. And compile on AGX, run on NX. Now, the basic intuition is that if we have more hardware resources, that means that the runtime of any application should be, it should be lesser on that architecture compared to the you know, architecture which has lesser resources. But the question is that, does it hold for TensorRT engines? Let's try to study that. Now let's look at the inference latencies for these NN models on four different cases which we discussed in the previous slide and see which one are anomalies. By anomaly, I mean that um, if the runtime on AGX is more uh, uh, compared to the NX, that means it's it's an anomaly. If it is almost, if it is less than or almost equal to, then we consider it's not an anomaly. So if we see that, we say, if you see that these three models have almost either the runtime on AJX less or almost equal to NX. But for the other four, if we see that, we see that the runtime on AJX is relatively more compared to runtime on NX. The primary reason for this is the TensorRT unpredictability. So this is because of that step which we discussed in I think the third uh, slide of the talk, which is called layer to kernel mapping. So the layer to kernel mapping brings in that unpredictability in TensorRT. Let's dig more into the analysis part. So we have three networks here, PadNet, FaceNet and MobileNet. And we have two cases, compile NX, run on NX, compile NX, run on AGX. So we are building the engine, TensorRT engine on the same board, but doing the inferencing on two different boards. So if we see from this table that the runtime of kernels, some of the kernels, on NX is less compared to AGX. If this is true for almost all the kernels here. So the thing is what we are trying to say from this is that there are many kernels uh, on NX which take lesser time on NX uh, compared to AGX. And this is the one of the reasons that leads to the overall execution time on NX to be lesser compared to the AGX. Next, we study the latency differences across engines on the same platform. So till now, we were studying it um, across the different platforms. Now we'll focus on the same platform. So we will have different engines, TensorRT engines built at different timestamps. And we'll see what is the inference latency for each, uh, for each compiled engine. So if we see from the table that LXNet, GoogleNet and TinyYolo they roughly for all the three engines, they have uh, the similar timings. The inference latency is almost similar. But for the other networks, we see that the runtime varies across different compilations. This is because each engine is a different uh, TensorRT compiled engine. And the, as I said initially also that TensorRT has this unpredictable nature. So engine one and engine two may have different kernel layer to kernel mapping. This leads to the different runtimes across the engines on the same platform also. Next, we dig in more into the latency differences across engines on the same platform. So here what we do, we have three engines and we have a single kernel. So during the, uh, during the execution of an uh, application, a single function or a kernel can be invoked multiple times. So if you see from the table from uh, for engine one, this a kernel is invoked nine times. Engine two, it is invoked eight times. Engine three, it's invoked six times. That means across the engines, across the different uh, TensorRT engines on the same platform, even the number of invocations for the same kernel also varies, which also adds to the um, difference in the run times across the, across the different engines uh, on the same platform. So the number of invocations across different compiled engines also can vary, leading to a different run times across different compiled engines. 
now let's go into the implications of the of these analysis so we first study the impact of these analysis on uh, microarchitectural performance modeling so we use a, a bsp performance model that was proposed in literature for a for a single kernel gpu application we extend it to the multi kernel gpu application according to this model the predicted execution time is given by governed by uh, some factors like as number of threads computational time communication cost of global and shared memory along with the clock frequency number of cores and there's a factor called lambda which is calculated as predicted time divided by the actual time i'm not going into the details uh, of this model in the interest of the time you can uh, go through the paper to know more about the model next we study the prediction error using bsp for tensor rt applications so what we do we run the application on nx and obtain the performance counters using the nvprof tool then we obtain the lambda on nx which is the predicted time divided the divided by the actual execution time and then we use this lambda on uh, of nx to predict the runtime on agx so we tabulate the uh, few uh, we tabulate the error values for few of the kernels for mobile net and we see that the error values are quite significant so this is because so bsp model as we saw that it is governed by factors like uh, number of cores the clock frequency it's expecting that agx model which is a powerful agx board which is a powerful board it will it will take less time compared to the nx however as we saw from our analysis that tensor rt is tensor rt is non deterministic it brings uh, it brings in some non determinism there are some cases where the agx will have um, will take more time uh, and nx will take less time so that unpredictability is not being captured by this model and leading to the high error in the bsp model now let's study the impact of these analysis on two real world uh, applications so one is a traffic intersection control the other is advanced driving uh, assistance systems adas systems now let's first go through the positive impact so we have classification accuracy so as we saw from our uh, analysis that tensor rt uh, models have slightly better or almost a similar accuracy compared to the non optimized ones that means they can lead to better um, management and discipline on the roads the second one is the adversarial accuracy gain we also uh, found that uh, adversarial on adversarial data sets our accuracy is much better and that means um, the, uh, they can provide uh, much robustness against uh, uh, against the malicious attacks also the other one is the th uh, throughput gain so as we saw that we have significantly much higher throughput compared to the non optimized ones that means even if the vehicles are moving fast on the road that means we can detect them easily the last one is the higher uh, detection concurrency as we saw from our analysis uh, using those cuda contexts and streams that we can pack uh, as many as 28 threads on nx uh, to run concurrently so this means that we can have multiple cameras on the roads uh, running concurrently and also this can help be helpful in the self driving cars where we can have multiple cameras uh, running together now let's look at the negative impact the first one is the non deterministic uh, detection output this means that let's say we have obstacles in uh, adas they may or may not be detected that can lead to an issue the next one is the non deterministic uh, classification output say uh, a number plate is uh, detected as somebody else's number plate that can lead to le legal issues uh, the other one is the slower inference on bigger platform say a company who is uh, deploying these edge devices on the roads they want to upgrade the system to with a much bigger platform they may end up with a slower inferences uh, inference as we saw from our analysis also the last one is the non deterministic uh, inference this means uh, that the same nn model is built on the uh, same platform multiple times and it uh, it gives us uh, different uh, inference times uh, uh, on different builds so this can lead to um, uh, this worst case execution time analysis difficult in uh, real world applications now uh, let me conclude by summarizing all the things which we have uh, done in this work so we uh, characterize the accuracy of classification networks uh, for both benign and adversarial data sets and uh, we then analyze the throughput of image classification and detection networks along with the concurrency support and we further analyze uh, the reasons uh, behind the anomalous behavior of nn models on the architectures which have more resources 
and then we further uh, we extend this analysis on our uh, of of tensor rt on our on the two real world applications and study the impact on the micro architectural performance modeling also finally we conclude that tensor rt non determinism can lead to various challenges in uh, real world applications that's it from my side uh, thanks for listening